Hi, I'm Steve Judge and I'm reading excerpts from my autobiography, Don't Lean On Your Excuses, a world champion's courageous story that inspires living with no regrets. So, my book is available to pre-order and buy. If you click on the link attached to this video, that will take you through to the Amazon website where you can get yourself a copy. Now, later on in the video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can win free tickets to the book launch party. That's going to be in October, and I'm really looking forward to meeting as many people there. But first of all, let me just read an excerpt from chapter 8, and I've called this One Step at a Time. Walking around the block on my housing estate was limiting me, and I needed somewhere with more scope for my walking training. I packed my rucksack and drove down to Rother Valley Country Park, which consisted of two big lakes with a flat five kilometre path circulating them. I parked my car and sat there contemplating if I was really going to do this. It gave me the same apprehension as walking into a desert of the great unknown without a map, compass or water. I knew that I had to do this, although my brain was telling me otherwise. I had to push myself out of my comfort zone. I reset my pedometer to zero and started my stopwatch as I left the safety of my car and walked using the correct and very slow method of RGM, reciprocating gait movement. As my stepping got into a rhythm, I was able to look up at the beauty of the park, the lake and the sky. Breathing in the air of liberation brought a smile to my face and a deep pride that I used to help me with the next step and then the next one. After 10 minutes, the pain was now setting in and my rhythm was getting out of sync. Grunting on each step with my right leg became a real slog. The dull pain was now draining my energy and as I gripped the crutches, my vocal efforts became louder. After 20 minutes, I found it increasingly difficult to cope with consequently drained me further. I was struggling and looked up for salvation. Ahead of me, in the distance, was a park bench. It was quite a way, but it was closer than going back to the car. I wasn't ready to turn back, not yet. And with that note, I took a step forward. Ow! The pain was really ramping up now. I squeezed my crutches hard and took another step. Ow! Through my breathing, I forced myself into a rhythm. The yelps of pain were weakening me as I slowly stepped closer and closer to my goal. Wobbling as I approached the bench through fatigue and apprehension, I finally reached my destination. I composed myself, turning, positioning, and with the last strength, slowly lowering myself down onto the seat. My crutches dropped to the ground, my shoulders sloped, and I breathed, just breathed. I stopped my watch at 31 minutes, six seconds. I was panting. 31 minutes. I looked at where I'd come from and then looked at my pedometer, which said 0.28 miles. What? I said with a mocking smile and laugh while still catching my breath. I shook my head in disbelief with a cynical grin, staring at the path that I had travelled down. Then a wave of memories came flooding back to me as my face scrunched up and my lips started quivering. Running, sprinting, marathons, 10Ks. My legs used to be so mighty and strong with muscles that powered me through life. Not even half a mile. Half a mile? I looked at my watch again and put my head in my hands. The tears ran down my face as I let myself cry. It was justified. What a waste of time. I was exhausted, demoralised, and my legs were throbbing. I was despondent, furious, and disappointed. What's the point? After a couple of minutes, I breathed in deeply and pulled myself up straight. I looked at the cage on my leg and saw that some of the pins were bleeding. The blood was trickling down my leg and soaking into my sock. I couldn't have done any more, not this time. My dad's words to me before he passed away jumped into my head. Keep doing what you're doing and always be the best that you can be. <laughs> well, I'd certainly done that here. I couldn't have walked any further as I was physically exhausted. I'd been sweating, but now I started to feel cold. I needed to get back. I needed to get home. Grabbing the crutches from the ground, I levered myself up, reset my watch and took the first step. A wave of heat flushed through my body as the pain awoke. Unable to scream out through my gritted teeth, I grunted as I used my reserve energy. Digging deep, I looked up at my goal ahead of me, the path that led me back to my car. I used my grunts and deep breaths as a rhythm to push me forward one step at a time. When I finally reached my car, I stopped my watch before sinking into the seat and closing the door so that nobody could see me cry this time. I wiped the tears away from my eyes and started the engine and drove home. I entered the house and closed the door with shaking hands. 
I just managed to get to the sofa where I collapsed. Pulling the blanket over me and curling up in a shivering mess, I had a sleepless night with muscle spasms and spent the next day recovering and tending to my wounds. Then, the following day, I got up, packed my rucksack and drove back out to Rother Valley Country Park. Now there's a, an input here with thoughts and feelings and reflections. You are strong, determined, set on your goals, committed, ready to achieve, persistent. But just how many times can you get up after being knocked down? You get up. So I love this. This is one of the things that I talk about when I'm doing a, a presentation as an inspirational speaker. It really uh, explains the drive and commitment that I had uh, to push myself. I believe that usually at some point achieving your goals, you're going to have to go out of your comfort zone and it's not going to be pretty. And this is a, a perfect example. I felt deflated, but I realized that I'd been the best that I could be. And that's the message that I give out to have no regrets and sometimes you, you've got to go out of your comfort zone to make sure you've been the best that you can be, you've got no regrets, you are working towards your goal. So I really like that section and like I said, one that I talk about. So that was an excerpt from my book. Now like I said, if you click on the link that will take you through to the Amazon website where you can pre-order yourself a copy. Now if you take a screenshot of that, because this is for the, the, the free tickets, the prize, take a screenshot of you ordering, pre-ordering and post that out on social media with the hashtag don't lean on your excuses as it says here on the video. Now I will pick that up and we will pick five lucky winners and you'll get a free ticket to the book launch party. That's in October. It's going to be a hundred people, friends, family, people that have helped me on my journey. There's going to be some memorabilia there, a bit of food, a bit of drink. And I'm really looking forward to meeting everybody there and hopefully that includes you. Otherwise I'm going to carry on reading my book for a little bit longer. That's not good. I think you're ready to try something. I'll do that again. That doesn't work because <laughs> there's no rhythm. No, <laughs> Three, two. So my book is available to order. You're giggling. I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm still giggling. <laughs> that will come later on in the book.